Good morning. Welcome to the Church of the Epiphany in Norfolk service for the second Sunday of Advent. We're marching to Bethlehem. Second Sunday of Advent. We're using right two of the Holy Eucharist beginning on page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth divided and enslaved by sin may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Collect of the Day. The Lord be with you, and also with you, let us pray. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation, give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her turn, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out. And I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up. Do not fear, say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for the second Sunday of Advent is Psalm 85, verses 1 and 2, and 8 through 13. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people and blotted out all their sins. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly his salvation is very near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. Oh, 
This is the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, see, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism for the repentance of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Advent is about expectation, about judgment and hope. And for us, it is also about a very unexpected savior. Today's gospel passage consists of the opening verses of the gospel of Jesus Christ according to Mark. And immediately he announces his intention, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, Mark says. But instead of talking about Jesus, he immediately starts to talk about John the baptizer. John was an ap apocalyptic prophet, and his message was repent while there's still time, because God is about to intervene in history and turn things upside down. I wonder when I hear John's gospel, John's proclamation, how he expected God to intervene. Perhaps John the baptizer expected God's wrath and judgment. There are reasons to assume so if we look at the other Gospels. Those being baptized by John for the forgiveness of their sins were no doubt afraid of God's wrath and judgment. And honestly, religion has often played upon people's fears. We human beings are a fearful lot. And that's really a good thing, because fear has been an important instinct for the survival of our species. We are born very vulnerable, small, helpless, dependent. And it takes us quite a long while to learn to feed ourselves and take care of ourselves. However, <clears throat> I wonder if fear is the definitive human trait. 
our fears do sometimes pursue us and sometimes affect the way we behave. But I've been hanging around a baby recently, my one-year-old grandson, and I've noticed that being afraid is something he only does once in a while. He's afraid if he hears a loud noise, for instance, or if he falls down and hurts himself. But that hardly describes most of his life. He's a loving creature. He wants to be around his parents and his brothers, and thanks be to God, me. He loves being with them, and he loves it when anyone pays special attention to him. He is curious, very curious, and he has an urge to learn. He has an urge to explore. He has an urge to practice new skills so he can be like those around him. And he pushes himself from one week to the next to be better than he was the week before. Perhaps fear isn't the most important aspect of what it means to be human. And maybe it is not always fear that inspires human beings to push harder, to make themselves excel. At least as significant as the fear that runs our lives are our ability to try to understand what's going on around us, our ability to imagine ourselves and our world as different, as more just, as better. Perhaps our ability to adapt to change is one of the things that has helped us survive, along with fear. And I'm guessing that our creativity, our perseverance, our joy, our wonder, our courage, and our capacity for goodness are also part of what makes the human species a long-lasting one. Sometimes our ability to love others and to put their needs before our own surprises even us. Now this is not to understate evil at work in our world. Of course there is anger and violence, death and loss. But I wonder if John the baptizer would have been surprised by the kind of savior that Jesus turned out to be. He came to save, not to judge. And he saved by loving to the end, by loving even when he was hated, rejected, mistreated, and killed. And he showed us the way out of the cycle of violence that we are caught in as human beings. That was the good news that Mark was declaring in verse 1 of the first chapter of his gospel. But it would be interesting to skip ahead because we're not a people who like to wait very much. And even though Advent is a season of waiting, let's skip ahead and look at the very end of the way Mark ends the good news that he starts in his chapter today. You may find it interesting to turn to chapter 16, and you'll see that there is a diversity of ancient manuscripts about how Mark, where Mark actually ends. One possible explanation for this diversity of opinions, or let's call them diversity of endings, is that the original ending to Mark was lost. We know that Mark's language and his style and his tone end at chapter 16, verse 8. After that, the words and the way things are said are not the way Mark has written his entire gospel. So possibly, the ending was lost, and later, People noticed that it was lost, and they looked at the other Gospels and formed what is called the short 
version of the ending of Mark, which comes after verse 8, or the longer ending of the Gospel of Mark. The interesting thing is, there are all sorts of words left out if you can compare one ancient manuscript to another. But let's look at what happens right at the end of chapter 16, verse 8. Three women have gone to the tomb to anoint Jesus' dead body. When they arrive, the tomb is open. They go into the tomb, and they see a young man there who tells them, you're looking for Jesus of Nazareth, but he is not here. Look, there is the place where they laid him. And indeed, he is gone. And the young man says to them then, go and tell Peter and his disciples that he is going ahead of them to Galilee, and that there you will all see him. So what do the women do in that very last verse? They went out and fled the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Afraid. Look, this is the end of the good news. Our fear takes over. Our fear wins again. I cannot believe that Mark intends for fear to have the final word. However, he does say that the women are afraid. Perhaps, however, what Mark intends to do with this ending is to leave it open, to leave room for those of us who hear the ending of the good news, to wonder, what comes next? Mark's open ending to his gospel leaves a lot of responsibility in the hearts, minds, and hands of those who hear his gospel. I wonder, is God waiting for us to continue what Jesus began? If Jesus has gone ahead of us, as well as those first disciples, where will we meet Jesus? If we do meet Jesus, what will we do then? I wonder how we can end the story, how we can be part of the good news. The Nicene Creed is found on page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In our intercessions today, we remember especially those friends and members of our congregation who need our prayers. Anne, Mike, Sheila, Jerry, Kevin, Nell, the healthcare workers and their families and the first responders 
and all of those suffering and working with the coronavirus. I bid you to offer your uh, personal petitions at this time in a moment of silence. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Our service continues with Eucharistic Prayer B, which you can find on page 367 of your prayer book. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we, we remember his death, death we, we proclaim his resurrection, resurrection we, we await, await his coming in glory. glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. <clears throat> the gifts of God for the people of God. Julia, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food, sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen the Advent seasonal blessing. May Almighty God, by whose providence our Savior Christ came among us in great humility, sanctify you with the light of his blessing and set you free from all sin. Amen. May he whose second coming in power and great glory we await make you steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in love. Amen. May you who rejoice in the first advent of our Redeemer, at his second advent be rewarded with unending life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Amen.